We see a classroom full of students where no one is interested in maths. Everyone just wants it to get over. It's a usual day. A girl named Mara Carlyle is playing with her pencil. Just then it falls off the table and as she bends to pick it up, the curly-haired Caitlin Ogden explodes. The students are seen exiting the class, but Mara is still sitting there as if trying to soak in what just happened. A guy named Jed Hayes also confessed that he was going to ask her for prom and breaks down while talking about it. Well, it's not so easy to see your prom date explode in front of you, but explosions are not always so bad. Therefore, subscribe to our channel because there is going to be a big explosion of many film recaps in it. Leave a like and a comment too. Everyone is seen running out of the school premises. Some soaked in, let's call it an explosion. Forensics are seen collecting evidence from the explosion. We see a police station. Everyone was being asked about Caitlin. Mara though was not helpful. Students are given clothes and are made to wait in the station. Dylan makes a funny remark, but only Mara chuckles. <laughs> Everyone imagines why that thing happened. Just when one of the girls loses her patience and almost shouts when they'll be let go. Mara says it'll only happen when it stops from happening again. Mara exits the police station and is received by her parents. At home, she sees a text from someone unknown, confessing his crush on her. Texting continues and it ends on a fun note. Mara is eager to take some shrooms and who better than Dalton twins when it comes to such stuff. Tess is not interested in this. They are then seen in an eatery where Mara puts her shrooms in her coffee. Their friendship is one fine example of how it's supposed to be. They plan on living together in a beach house when they're old. One minute into the conversation about Caitlin and Dylan approaches and joins them. Dylan starts off with his flirting skill when Mara realizes it's the unknown boy who has been texting her. Dylan also tells her that he wants to live his life to the fullest. Mara takes Dylan with her to the girl's room as she wants to throw up. Tess makes him aware of the part where he would have to hold her hair. Her hallucination due to shrooms starts and she sees multiple Dylans. Good thing though, Dylan is with her throughout that night. Dylan and Mara spend some good time together as well and with an added bonus of Dylan having to watch Mara puke multiple times. Mara is asked out for homecoming. It's the homecoming day. Everyone is in their costumes. So is Mara and Tess. Mr. Quaker Oats' is Dylan enters the premises. Oh, are you supposed to be carrot? Yes! Oh my God, thank you! Dylan here probably scores some brownie points when he recognizes Mara's costumes as Carrie. They both sit in a spot. Mara is interested to know Dylan's crush timeline. He starts explaining with full enthusiasm. From the day he first entered the class and saw her to noticing her antics and biting Jed's hands as he tried to wrap arm around her, to her writing a nice poem in the class, to being friends on Facebook and much more, and then finally the explosion day at the school when he ran to her and took care of Caitlin's bag. The day at the police station, when Mara said that it could happen again to anyone, made him decide to finally ask her out instead of waiting for some right moment. Mara seemed to pay little attention to the whole story as she is seen taking pictures of the jocks. Then she also tells him of the moment where she liked him. Their love starts to kindle and is interrupted by another explosion of a player on ground. They both grab each other's hand and run out of the area. A moment of togetherness between them. The city becomes a major news the next day. Both Tess and Mara attend the memorial of the boy where his teammates remember him. Mara is standing alone in a dark street area when a white ice cream truck comes next to her and stops. It's Dylan. They both reach a party dedicated to kids who exploded in their remembrance. Sooner than later, they both go out for a walk on Mara's insistence and discuss the reasons as to why the explosion is happening and jokingly blame it on alcohol. They enter a porch area and stop walking. Mara desperately wants to kiss Dylan and they do. When they entered the house to see what had happened, it's another teenager who exploded. Mara and Tess are seen talking to an agent named Rosetti. Rosetti asks them for their help and to come up with something as she herself does not know anything. We see Mara going to the Daltons and tells them that the agent told her to get her drugs. All three of them are in the car heading towards the place where the twins hide their stash. Some usual chit-chatting. Mara tells them about Dylan. <laughs> as the visibility factor is gone, the sister takes the driver's seat to get control of the car. Next, we see Dylan approaching the accident site. He looks inside the car, but nothing. He sees Mara's hand print on the stone next to him 
and starts to walk in that direction. He spots her in a river stream and hugs her. She was trying to clean herself, but to no great effect. Dylan tells her that he thought it was her. They hug each other tightly again. He bought her sweatsuit and had called Rosetti before he got there. Just then, he sees someone in a hazmat suit watching them. A flock of humans in hazmat suits then appears and grabs hold of them. They are now seen in a quarantine-like situation, on different beds with drips and other medical equipment attached to them to test for. They also jokingly play the E.T. game. At night, Dylan wakes Mara up and tells her that the whole class is there. Their beds are closer to each other, with only a plastic wall keeping them separated. Also, we see both of them in a girlfriend-boyfriend relationship. The next morning, an official shows an advertisement to the students and offers to answer all their questions. Mara takes the official's case and tells him that their presence doesn't necessarily help, and in fact is a sign that nothing will be okay anytime soon. The official tries to convince them, but it just fills the kids with a bit of anger, and a revolt-like atmosphere builds up and is short-lived as another kid explodes, and then another one blows up while sleeping. <laughs> Tests are being done regularly. Pill by pill, the students are being tested, and at the same time, kids keep getting exploded. Unless one day a blue pill starts to show positive signs, and finally the kids are released out of the quarantine. Parents are happy to see them. Next day, Dylan is surprised by Mara at her home when she gives her body to him. They sleep for the very first time. It's special for both of them. Their class is a private one. Private one given by an ex-soldier who tells them how he has seen someone blow up in the past. He was assured to help them graduate. Rosetti and Mara meet again. Rosetti doesn't think it's all over. On Valentine's Day, Mara decorated Dylan's barn. We can rewind the film to the point where Dylan mentioned dancing in the barn alone, and two of them dance and have fun. Dylan appreciates this gesture and confesses his love for her. The doctor from the kids' quarantine days is making them understand the blue pill that it's a treatment and not a cure. A volunteer kid acts as per the doctor's advice. This is bullshit. One after the other, the kids start to explode. They run out of the class. As their run towards the exit happens, the kids keep exploding one after another. It's a horrifying visual to say the least. Mara gets left behind in the commotion and loses Tess and Dylan in the process. She manages to find an exit and takes a deep breath. Dylan manages to find her. They hug. As Dylan looks at her with a broad smile, he explodes in front of her. Mara is walking home all by herself, covered in blood, just when Rossetti spots her and takes her to hospital. We see that a fragment of his jaw had hit her in the head. Mara stops taking the blue pills and stops talking to Tess and forgets about living a normal life. Her father is worried about her. Dylan's funeral comes and goes. Old videos of Dylan are what she watches most of the time. She finds a friend in alcohol, Mara steals alcohol from the store. She makes an exit. Agent Rossetti waits for her outside the store. Mara offers her alcohol. <laughs> Finally, Mara's parents raise their voice to her about the car incident and being drunk all the time. She doesn't want to help her situation as she might die soon. Her parents are left helpless. She later checks out the prom message on her laptop while smoking pot and then sees the message board of other students who are talking about the Covington curse. Mara believes what they are saying, which is that she is the curse. Mara makes a drunk entry to the prom event and notices the dull atmosphere. The only thing adding a good feel to it is the music. She continues drinking from a bowl of punch she spiked with alcohol. Later, she goes onto the stage and takes the blame for killing everyone, and she is sorry for being the curse. She exits with her diploma. Mara goes to Dylan's grave to tell him that she loves him as well. I love you too and then lies down next to his grave. She is joined by Dylan's mom, who also lies next to her. Mara apologizes for not being present at the funeral and shares the story of hers and Dylan when they hung out. Mara is consoled by her. Mara feels as if she is dying inside and is scared all the time. She tells Mara that life can feel like that sometimes and none of the kids deserved what happened to them. Mara holds her knowing that even she needs a bit of support in these times. Mara is back home. She and her parents reconcile. She takes her bandage off and remembers Dylan as she looks at the scar. Just like everything else in the world, the explosion stops. Mara says final goodbye to Rosetti, continues taking the blue pill and leaves for college in Dylan's truck. She drives by the school to have one last look before it was to be broken down. By this time, she remembers the classmates who are no longer alive. The essence she gets from the story is that everyone has to pass away one day 
and therefore, it is important to live your life to the fullest. Mara imagines her life in the future, doing many different things from writing, being the president of the country, to dating many men, and even being a mom one day. Also, get the opportunity to tell some of the men what Dylan is to her, and is still very much a part of her life. Nothing is inevitable at the end of the day. She won't waste her life for something far-fetched. After all, we don't know how much time we have left. For more such recaps, subscribe to Sci-Fi Movie Recap. If you loved watching it, then please leave a like and comment on what you feel about this film.